currently air quality in Australia is pretty poor because of recent bushfire smoke. We're going to show you how to rig up a simple air filter using activated carbon which can remove not only bushfire smoke but also um, food odours and uh, a lot of toxic gases. For example, um, mustard gas used in World War I. Carbon-based molecules, which is common to a lot of pollutants, tends to adsorb or stick to the surface of carbon. But oxygen contains no carbon atoms, so it tends not to adsorb. The carbon can be charcoal, for example, from burning wood or fibrous material like uh, coconut husks. Activated means the carbon's been treated to increase its surface area to give more sites for the pollutants to adsorb. An acid like lemon juice or a strong base like bleach or calcium chloride can all chemically create micropores or small channels within the carbon that the air flows through. As illustrated in these electron microscope images. By activating this carbon, it has now about a billion times more surface area than the unactivated one, which means its absorption capacity is much, much larger. We want the polluted air to go through five centimeter thick filter bed of activated carbon. Wash out carbon dust. Repeat until water's clear. Dry carbon pores. Build the filter frame. Put fan in lid. Pack carbon filter bed. Total cost breakdown. Issues arising from pollution, it's like climate change or bushfire smoke or plastics waste, are often thought of as political problems to solve that might just need a new government policy. But as engineers, we think of them as technical challenges. Activated carbon filters are over 100 years old. They were first developed for World War I. But can we use better filter material today? And what do we do with the pollutant after we've collected it? These are all still open technical questions that still require creative thought and practical implementation. <laughs>